Hey there YouTubers, it's Don coming back to you again with a how-to video. Uh, this is going to be talking about our unshielded standard RJ45 uh, plug with load bar designed for category 6 and 6A cable. Uh, just to quickly show you, this particular plug uses a colored load bar that is position sensitive and that will be detailed in our little termination here coming up. But I wanted you to give you a heads up that this particular plug um, is a solid nose design. It's not the pass through, but it's, it's designed to position the conductors onto a load bar and that's what sets the distance for you inside the plug. So well, let's get to it. Okay, so we have a category 6A cable here. It's an unshielded cable. And we're gonna go ahead and start from the beginning. We're going to strip this guy. Uh, the idea here is to strip off the cable jacket in such a way that it doesn't nick conductors. And the way you do that, take our true cable strip tool and raise the blade all the way up. Put the cable about an inch and a half through there and then lower the blade so it makes good firm contact. Turn a couple of times, take it off. And then you'll notice that it has scored the cable jacket, but not actually cut through it. And that's what you want to see. So pop the jacket. You can just work it back and forth a couple times. And there we go. It's popped off. Keep that because we're going to use it to untwist conductors. And before you do anything else, it behooves you to check your conductors at the very edge of the cable jacket. Make sure you didn't accidentally nick anything. If you do, you have to start over again the reason being that if you nick a conductor or cut you know cut into the insulation and you can see a cut there that's going to reduce your performance it could even actually translate into a bad cable or worse yet it could translate into a semi-working cable that you can't just quite figure out what's going on so okay so we took off the uh the uh, little uh strip cord there rip cord i don't use those personally uh, some people do some people don't the next step is to put these guys into a star pattern so we can get rid of the spline. Now the spline removal requires a little bit of finesse. Uh, what I do is I will take these pairs and I will take the tool. Now there's four wings on the spline. You want to cut at a downward angle on each wing by resting the clippers, your flush cutters here, right on the cable jacket. And that is so that you can get that spline cut as evenly to the cable edge as possible, or to the jacket edge. The reason is that you want to have that plug go on easily, and this spline is sticking up in any way, it will impede your ability to get it on there. Once you got all the four wings cut or snipped, just simply twist and remove. Put them back out, then using your little cable jacket piece, you can untwist these conductors. You have to start them with your finger typically first. And just take them down one pair at a time. You got four pairs you got to work with. So all of the twists have been, uh, well, I should say the conductors have been untwisted, but we need to get rid of these twists here. And the way you do that is you take a smooth metal dowel like so. I've just, I forgot where I actually got this thing. I, I, I found it somewhere and I thought, hey, I think that would be useful rather than having to hunt down a screwdriver. I just use this as a dedicated uh, tool to do this particular kind of work. And I recommend strongly uh, that you wear a glove. And the, the, as you pass these conductors between the bar and your thumb, you're going to definitely wish you were wearing a glove after you've gotten a, a few of these out of the way. So start at the uh, very end of the cable jacket and work your way up. Two to three times is typically enough to get rid of the, uh, the twists in these guys. Or kinks, I should say. Now twists anymore, they're kinks now. Now we're getting rid of the kinks. All right, so we have now gotten the kinks out. The next step is uh, you definitely need to get these into the right sequence. Now, when you're dealing with cabling that's got a spline in there, that, that spline is just going to battle you just every step of the way to get these conductors lined up, and they don't like to stay lined up. So you got to keep your, once you start getting these conductors into order and you're holding them there, you're committed to keeping it there until you've got everything done the plug on and everything. So basically you start, well, I like to use the T568B sequence, um, which is uh, white, orange, orange, 
and then white green. While you're working on this also, it's a great idea to keep things clean down here. Don't, link, don't let things cross up at the bottom. So white green, then un unavoidably though, you will have some that are gonna cross over. And then you got blue. I think I can do better this way, maybe. Then white blue, then green, then white brown, and brown. Now right now it looks a little funky, but we're gonna twist the thing around and make it cooperate. I like to work on it from top down because it's easier for, easier for me to remember the sequence and I always get it right. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Now this white, blue and blue conductor down here decided it's going to want to cause a little bit of trouble. So you have to kind of finesse and finagle it so that things stay as clean as possible down here at this end. That's very important when putting on a load bar. You want things to be as clean as possible down here. So again, white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown, and hey, there we go. The next step is flush cutting. And we flush cut to make it easier to put the load bar in, in this uh, load bar onto the cable in this case. Now, one thing to be aware of, this load bar is position sensitive, which is to mean it only goes into the plug one way. So this is where you need to be aware of where your conductors are in sequence versus where the plug is versus where the load bar is. Now, easy way to remember that. The bottom of the plug, okay, means that which is the latch side, put the latch side down so you can't see the latch anymore. And that's where white orange starts at the top and brown that's at the bottom. And the, the load bar should have the angle coming up. In other words, flat side of the load bar down, angle side up. And in the case of the plug, latch side down, flat side up. And that's how it, it's all gonna go together. And this is, we're starting white orange, and then we've got brown. So now everything's in the right sequence. Then you take the load bar and you simply a little rocket on there and you can finagle it on there and twist it on there. Push it down as far as you can take it. Typically it's not gonna let you get all the way down. If you manage to get it all the way to, to the cable jacket edge, I, I, I give you applause. Uh, because the conductors start binding up and it just it doesn't work out that well. So uh, once you've got that load bar on though, you want to confirm that conductors are still right. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown, and they are. And that's about as far down as I'm going to get that load bar. Next up is to take your flush cutters and you're going to flush cut very evenly at the front of that load bar. And then you're going to make sure you don't have any of your uh, ripcord in the way there. All right, so now that the load bar is on there and it's been flush cut, then this load bar, I have confirmed, will not go any further down. I tried to make it go down further. It just simply won't. Uh, take note again that the angled part of the load bar is facing upward. The white orange is at the top and you're looking at the plug from the bottom side. In other words, not the latch side. And that's exactly how you want to put this in. So the whole assembly will go in there. You may have to pinch the cable jacket to make it start to go in. And then push and keep pushing until it won't go anymore. And that's it, it's not going any further. All right, so what do we have here? We've got a load bar that has been fully seated and you can see that it stopped there on the ledge. There's a ledge inside the plug and there's the ledge on the load bar. It went all the way in, it stopped, and it positioned the conductors right under the golden contacts. The cable jacket is well past this ledge here. Now, if the cable jacket had stopped at this ledge right here, it would have been right at spec. So the distance of the end twist from here to the end of the golden contacts would have been one half inch, which meets spec. This, act, this termination actually uh, goes past specification. Uh, in other words, it's a tighter termination, that's a good thing. 
And the next step after that is very simply to, to terminate it. So you unlock your tool and you put your plug in. You don't have to use excessive force. Just lightly put it in there, hold it. And then when you start to close it, you can take your hand off, push it all the way down, lock your tool, check your work. All right, so we've got the strain latch, which has cut, well not cut into, but has divoted the cable jacket here. So it can't pull out. And then you also make certain that the golden contacts are all pushed down and they are, there's nothing popped up. So there we go, a working uh, category 6A termination. And it's a, using a staggered load bar. So there, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. I love feedback, so if you've got a better way of handling one of these guys, let me know. Uh, I'm always up to learning something new. So anyway, you have a great day, and thanks for watching, and happy networking. <laughs>